All right, uh, welcome everybody to another episode of O365A. Uh, the boys are back uh, home and we're all relaxed and uh, recovered from uh, Microsoft Ignite. It was uh, quite a week. Uh, I think we all had a really good time there and learned a lot of uh, significant things. Um, so our topic of today uh, to get us started back out is uh, free teams. So I'm going to ask Dino to start us off. All right, thanks, Ab. So um, in terms of eligibility, um, you know, really the free version of Teams is going to be eligible for companies that don't already have an Office 365 footprint today. So these are net new customers, not that never set set foot into um, you know, 365 space. So with that is also, uh, again, a customer that doesn't have their email address registered to sign into Office 365. So really we're looking at like literally brand new customers to Microsoft. Um, and what do you, what do you get with, with that free version? So the feature list is quite impressive, actually, and, uh, you do get guest access with it. Um, and along with that, uh, the guest access lets you, uh, talk to enterprise orgs that already use Teams. So that's, that's really nice. Um, you get the office apps in Teams Online. Um, you, you still get the 140 integration, uh, apps that integrate, uh, with Teams today. So uh, once again, that's pretty. Uh, that's that's a pretty neat feature. You're allowed to do uh, one-to-one AV and um, group calls only. So it's, it's going to be limited to your organization making internal calls only. So voice and video. Um, again, once again, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, and apps. Uh, OneNote apps and Teams is available. Um, you can do channel meetings. Um, screen sharing and it's it's available today and and more than 150 markets and 35 languages so really uh, it's quite quite the impressive list of features i'll hand it over to mike and talk to talk about limitations yeah so so obviously this is a freemium model so there's going to be some limitations compared to when you're purchasing uh the, the product so some of the limitations is it can only span up to 300 users so uh you know Organizations that are you know, looking at this model, you know, know that if you're going over 300 users, you're going to have to look at a paid model. Uh, also, on the file storage, you get uh, up to two gigabytes per user for personal storage, and then the, the teams and channels are limited to to 10 gigabytes of that shared storage. Uh, versus if you're on a paid licensing, you get like a terabyte per user, so that like scales quite fast on a, on a licensing when you're you're paying for the product. Uh, but yeah, you're not, you know, this is a, you're bringing in a, an email address that's not registered to Office 365 or an Azure AD, so you don't have access to Exchange. Uh, you're not going to have access to OneDrive or SharePoint or Planner or Yammer, uh, you know, any of those third, uh, those other services that, uh, can be exposed through Teams. Uh, also, you're not able to schedule meetings, so you have to do, uh, ad hoc or, uh, meet now meetings. Uh, you don't get the ability to do cloud recording. And uh, there's no ability to add enterprise voice. So using direct routing or calling plans for Microsoft, uh, you won't be able to access that in the free model. Once Pat over, there's also the security and compliance aspects. Yeah, so um, much like Michael uh, talked about some of the limitations in the, the feature set of free teams, any company, of course, adopting something like Teams, it's an end user application. There's data involved. There's access involved. So you want to pay attention to uh, security and compliance. Um, the free version of Teams does give you regional based uh, data residency and uh, data encryption at rest and at transit. So that, that's really good. Uh, I think one of the things you want to pay attention to, though, with a uh, uh, application like Teams is it can spread quickly. You know, if you look at the slacks of the world or uh, collaboration apps like Yammer and, and Teams, of course, um, a couple of people can start using them. They can spread quickly, and then pretty soon um, you have a lot of your organizational data potentially at risk and uh, people signing in. So some of the things you don't get from a security and compliance perspective with free Teams is uh, no multi-factor authentication for users, <clears throat> which, of course, is uh, <clears throat> one of the, the big things that you'll you'll want to enforce from a security perspective. And you don't get that nice single sign-on experience for all your business apps. And one of the really good things about Office 365 and Azure AD, of course, is that single sign-on experience. Once the user is authenticated, um, they can 
be authenticated into other apps um, that are registered in that that directory without having to enter their username and password again. So you don't get that experience with the free version of Teams. Uh, you also don't get any auditing or reporting uh, tools until you upgrade to the, the paid version. So again, if, you know, this starts to get adopted a little, little quicker and faster than you, you thought, um, you can find yourself with no, uh, reporting or auditing capabilities, which may or may not be a, a problem, but something you want to be aware of. And, um, on the administration and support side of it, uh, Habib, what, what have you found there in terms of, uh, the free version of Teams? Yeah, so uh, there is no administration and support <laughs> uh, that, uh, that's provided. Um, it really, the only administration side of things is when you create a team, um, the user uh, that creates a team is now the administrator, and at that point they can provide the uh, ability to assign someone as a admin of the group uh, in itself. So that's that's the only way to sort of have an administration interface, but there's nothing like the um, a Skype and Teams uh, administration portal to manage the users and teams in that way, right? Um, so if you're looking for any type of uh, phone or web support, uh, usage reporting, as Curtis mentioned as well, uh, SLA times or configure, configurable uh, policies and user settings, um, you, you have to have a paid version. Um, but that's not to say that, you know, if you're having an issue or you want to try to do something within the team that you're not sure about, there's definitely a lot of um, blog articles, podcasts that are out there. Uh, there's the Microsoft Tech community, which is huge uh, in providing, you know, I guess users a resource to ask some questions and have some of the experts and other people that are online there give uh, their feedback and try and support them within that way too. So there's at least, uh, you know, a few different avenues to, to get some support. So. Um, and the next thing I wanted to touch on was uh, what happens when you hit the limitations that uh, Michael had mentioned. So when a user, uh, when I, I guess a, a team or the freemium version you know, goes over the 300 users or the uh, the file storage is, is maxed out. You know what needs to be what needs to be done, right? So um, <clears throat> obviously the the next step is to purchase a uh, a paid paid SKU, whether that's the business premium or the enterprise versions. Uh, but you know just a couple of things that uh, you want to keep in mind, right? So once you actually upgrade, the the whole organization gets upgraded. So all of the information that you have within the team and all the um, you know the the data and all the contacts and the chats, all that information is brought over. However, there is no mixture of freemium licensed users and um, you know business or enterprise licensed users. So you need to actually um, bring everybody over. So you just want to make sure that you're cognizant of the uh, the cost um, that's going to come associated with as well, right? Um, and then during the upgrade, you'll be asked to register a domain. So uh, you'll get a free domain from Microsoft for one year. And then after that, it's $12 per year to register a name domain. Um, and then uh, once, uh, you know, you, you upgrade, uh, obviously you need to make sure that you sign in with the appropriate mail addresses and, and with the new domain and so on. So, uh, it, it seems like a pretty quick process. Um, you know, you, there's a, you know, a link that you go to in which you sign in with the account that, uh, manages, uh, the team. Uh, and then go through the process of, um, you know, registering your domain. Um, once that is all set up, you know, entering your payment information, reviewing the order, and then once it's placed, the order is placed, then you'll be upgraded to whatever the business uh, license that you selected or the enterprise SKU. So um, it seems like a, a pretty a pretty smooth process. And I like the fact that you don't lose all your data. But, and to me, that's pretty huge. Yeah. <clears throat> So let's talk, let's talk about uh, who this is probably best suited for, because if you're a business right now and you have a domain that has anything to do with Office 365 today, you really can't use free teams with um, with your existing domain, right? Ha you can't have a domain registered with Azure AD and use free teams. So it seems like it's it's really well suited for for companies that maybe haven't adopted the Microsoft Cloud yet and are interested in Teams to replace a uh, collaboration tool set they have today and want to try out Teams before they make the jump to Office 365. Would you guys agree? Anything to add there? 
yeah, yeah I for think, sure. Uh, there's a, there is this other offer that's coming around. I don't think it's publicly accessible yet, but it's supposed to be over the next couple of months. So customers that are consuming Office 365 services, there's this program that's coming out. It's called the Microsoft Teams Commercial Trial Offer. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, this is for those customers that are in an Azure AD tenant. Uh, and, but this is for, for users to register that don't have Teams licensing. So if you have, you know, an E3 SKU or whatever that has Teams functionality, uh, this this doesn't work for that. But if you're a user that doesn't have, maybe you just have a planner license, then you can you can request to have access to this trial offer. It's a one year offer. It gives you almost half a million licenses that your organization can use. Yeah. But as soon as the first user registers, it's a year from that span. So even if I'm, you know, user one, I I took it, I took a look at it. And then, you know, 10 users enable it four months later. Uh, it's still one year from the first activation. Uh, that program is not publicly available yet. So it's supposed to be the next few months. Uh, and it doesn't work for users that have Teams functionality disabled. So it's not a way to work around administration to get Teams. Uh, so it de- definitely has to be controlled from admins, uh, allowing a user to, to access this trial and then uh, obviously not bypass any of the rules. Yeah, and I, I mean, I guess I'll talk about the elephant in the room. Obviously, it's, uh, you know, giving an, an, another option as opposed to Slack for companies that are looking for, yeah, sorry, <laughs> that are looking for uh, something to do with, you know, uh, collaboration and, uh, you know, communications and so on. Uh, it's definitely another option for a company to look at, right? So, I mean, it's uh comparable uh comparable products um and basically depending on what the business requirements are that's you know ultimately what the decision is but um i think it was pretty big on microsoft to come out with a, a free version of, uh, of teams okay. well, i won't do the the vendor name game but uh, there, there's other vendors that are doing meetings as well meetings first right so teams free you can access the, the rich uh, meeting experience of having the voice and video aspects so it's pretty, pretty solid on that, that side. Yeah, and I mean, it, it is good for that very reason, Habib, because you can imagine if you, you're you using whatever collaboration tool and you just want to try Teams, but you don't want to go through the whole licensing of Office 365, this allows you to do a POC and try try the functionality before you dive in with both feet. So that, that is a good uh, a good use case. Yeah, especially especially because you're getting uh, you know the 140 plus apps that are already available today in the, the paid version, you know that that's a good thing, and and the the UI is identical to what you're getting in the uh, in the paid version as well. So from a support perspective, as we talked about earlier, you know the users can just go into the tech community, and there's like a plethora of info there in terms of getting help, and I think that just you know, or let it let it grow organically, and and uh, you know, when when companies are ready, they can easily move to the to the paid version. Awesome, uh, great session uh, tonight, and uh, thanks everybody for joining in, and uh, we'll uh, catch you on the next one. See you, See you later. later.